So about two months ago, I made a video about what software I'm using on my degoogled Android device. Well, two months later, and I can proudly say that I am still using degoogled Android and it still works absolutely fantastically. And that past video seemed to be fairly well received, so I think it's now about time for a follow-up video because I've changed around a lot of the things that I have on my device. So let's go ahead and talk about what software I'm using on my degoogled Android for this month. Right now, on the Linux Lounge. If you enjoy these videos, please be sure to follow the link in the description to join LBRY, the creativity and freedom respecting open source alternative to YouTube. Now, the most notable change that I've made to my degoogled Android experience from two months ago is that I have since changed ROMs and I've switched to this, CR Droid. Now, the reason that I've switched to this, and really the only reason why I switched to this, is because there is an official build for my device. And this ROM builds loads of devices. So for example, if we click get started, we can see just how many devices are officially supported. It's like all the devices like the Nexus 5, there's my Samsung Galaxy S7, which isn't really supported elsewhere. And it's based on the newest version of Android and it works, well, really well. And what I found after I installed this is it's actually quite customizable too. And it has like lots of nice customization features that uh, Lineage OS doesn't have. One thing that this ROM does differently to the past ROM I was using is that the last ROM I was using it was Lineage OS for Micro-G. Now, as the name implies, that ROM has Micro-G bundled by default and also comes with F-Droid with a privilege extension by default. Now, when I installed this, I decided I would try going without Micro-G and it works really well. I found I actually don't need Micro-G. So now my phone is basically sending no data whatsoever to Google, which is really nice, not even spoof data or anything like that. Although one or two apps do still complain that I need, you know, the Google apps, but they seem to work fine anyway. So with that said, I've got to say CR Droid. If you've got a device that's not supported by other ROMs, maybe give this a look because it's a fantastic custom ROM. But with that said, let's go ahead and move on device and have a look at how I've got everything set up. Now here we are on device with our Samsung Galaxy S7 running CR Droid, so still using the same device but a different custom ROM. Now the first thing of note, um, like that's different between now and two months ago, is that I am now using a different launcher. I'm using a launcher called Unlauncher, which I do have a dedicated video on, but TLDR, I would highly recommend this launcher and it's, you know, it's really good. Now, I've got a few apps here pinned on the home screen, but let's just go through the apps that I've actually got installed. So I've got ArchiDroid, which is a flashcard program, and I will say I'm gonna repeat a lot of what was said in the last video for the sake of just having a complete video, but I've got a few new programs on here too. I've got the audio recorder, which I think came with CR Droid. I've got Aurora Store, which still works fantastically and can still be used to download Google Play apps. I've now got a Bitcoin wallet, which I actually haven't ended up using, but it just seemed like a cool idea to have Bitcoin on my phone, but I might delete that app. I've got, you know, some more standard phone apps. Conversations, which is a XMPP client. I don't use that chat protocol very often, but it's still nice to have. I've got a document viewer, email, F-Droid, which is the app store that I use. It's still a fantastic app store. Um, I don't have the privileged extension anymore, but I found out I didn't need it because F-Droid works well enough without, although that does mean I have to manually update and install my apps, but that's no big deal. Feeder, which is my RSS reader, really nice one. Fennec F-Droid, which is basically just Firefox for mobiles with all the branding removed. Now, Firefox on mobile is one of those things that I really want to like, but it's always seemed a little bit iffy to me and it generally runs quite slow. So I kind of hope that that you know, improves in the future because Firefox on mobile is otherwise really good besides the speed and occasional bugs. I've got Files Frost, which is an icon pack. I can safely delete that because this launcher has no icons. That's by design. Got the standard gallery, good weather, KDE Connect, which I actually don't use KDE Connect anymore, but honestly, I don't see why I stopped using it because it's really nice. LBRY, which is a fantastic app, and I believe it's now actually in the Afteroid store, so that's quite easy to get a hold of. Libera Pro, which is a uh, ebook reader. Now, if you use this on the Google Play Store, I believe there's a light version you can get for free, and then there's a pro version that you have to pay for. 
If you want it for free, you can go ahead and go over to the Asteroid Store and get it, but you should still probably support the developer if you want the pro version. You get, well, I've got Libra Torrent, which it's a good torrent program, I just haven't really needed it on my phone. I've got Magic Earth, which that's actually a proprietary maps app, it's the one that comes with E. Now, the reason I've got this is because I wanted to try it out and see what it was like. It's slightly better than the open source alternatives, but not better enough that I want to keep it. Material Fbook, which is a Facebook client, works fine. I wish I didn't need it, but I guess that's kind of how it is. Messaging, Minesweeper, Music, New Pipe. Uh, New Pipe is a YouTube client, and that's a program that's getting really impressive because apparently, um, in the near future, it's going to support BBC Sounds. So you can get all your uh, BBC podcasts and stuff on there, which is really cool. Uh, noise, which is a sort of white noise program. Open Board, which is the launcher that I was using for a short period of time before I switched to Unlauncher. Let's go ahead and open it up, and well, I guess I can't go ahead and look at how it is. Oh wait, no, never mind. That is actually a keyboard program. That's the keyboard that I use. It's based on the AOSP keyboard and it has a few extra languages and stuff. Also, it has a few different themes and you can give it keyboarders, which I like to have. So that's cool to have. OSM and is a open source maps program, which is cool. Outlook, obviously like the proprietary Microsoft service. Um, it does work without the Google apps and stuff and it works without Micro G2, which is cool. Now, this is proprietary and I would rather not have to use it, but it is actually quite a good email app in fairness. Privacy, now this is quite cool. It's a sort of web browser with privacy in mind. You can go ahead and enable and disable stuff like JavaScript and whatnot up here with the little um, shield icon. Also, as you can see, it has a rather nice um, dark theme. So if we just go ahead and punch in some random odds and ends, it might take a second to load. Um, that's very strange. I'm not sure why that's not working. But what I like about this browser is, if we go onto Wikipedia, as you can see, it sort of themed everything dark. Now, I might actually switch to this because this is the only open source browser that I've seen that has really good performance and also has a plugin to make every web page dark which is, you know, it's something I like to have on my desktop, so I guess I can now have it on my phone too. I'll probably switch that at some point. Proton VPN, which I very rarely use as sort of VPN, but when I do, it's this one. Red Reader, which is a Reddit client. I'm sort of undecided as to whether or not I want to use this or Slide. I think I like Slide a little bit better because it just kind of feels a bit more modern and polished, but either works. Revolution IRC, I very rarely use IRC, so I can't comment on that. Senreda Votaro Esperanto Dictionary, which is something that I rarely have a need for anymore, but it's still cool to have. Um, I've got Simple Scrobbler, which is a last FM scrobbling program, works really well. Slide, Reddit client, and I've got Spotify on here, which I'm sort of slowly building up my offline music collection, so at some point I won't need that, but... For the time being, it works really well, even without Google Apps or Micro G. Steam, another thing that works really well without Micro G or Google Apps. I've got Super Tux Cart, which is a really good port of the PC game. A survival manual, which is just something that's fun to flick through. Tashi Yomi, I don't read as many sort of mangas as I used to, so I can't really comment on how well it works, but I can't really see myself reading a full manga on like such a small screen, but maybe you want to, I don't know. I've got Microsoft Teams, which once again works fine without Micro G or G apps. I don't know if you get notifications from that though, but notifications on Outlook do seem to work, so I'm going to assume that they're probably going to work here too. Termux, which is essentially a full Linux terminal on a phone, it's pretty neat. Uh, timetable, which is just sort of a um, timetable and scheduler type program. Um, I don't know if it works well, but I'm going to sort of try it out at some point and see how that goes. Tor Browser, which is a, you know, of course it's Tor Browser for Android, works really well. And I believe it's actually uh, Firefox based, so it's not Chrome or anything like that, like most Android browsers tend to be. Transistor, which is a online radio program, don't tend to listen to much radio, so I don't know if it works well, but, you know, I've used it in the past and quite liked it, so that's why it's here. Tweedaray, which is a Twitter client, and I think it also supports Mastodon, which works really well too. But I would much rather use Tusky for Mastodon, and I rarely use Twitter, but it is what it is. And I've got VLC and Vivaldi. 
Now, Vivaldi I actually got from the Google Play Store. Now, this is an open source, and I just wanted to see how well it would work. Um, it works okay. Like, it's not an amazing Android browser. It's a little bit slow. And it also constantly complains that it needs Google Apps, but it continues to work anyway, so I'm not sure what that's about. Uh, my current browser that I use on my phone at the moment is Bromite, which essentially what this is, is it's un-Google Chromium for Android with like loads and loads of other features built in. So, you know, you've got an ad blocker, you've got some privacy features, you know, you've got extra search engines, that kind of stuff. It's a really, really nice browser and I would probably recommend it to any Android users. And also there's a few other apps I think are quite neat on here. Telegram Foss, which I'm still using, you know, I wish I could switch away from Telegram, but I suppose it's better than using Facebook Messenger or whatever. You know, I've got uh, Tusky, which is a Mastodon client, works really well, which, by the way, I will have a link to this in the description. I now have a Mastodon page where I post, you know, updates and stuff, and, you know, I post about new videos that are coming out and that kind of thing. It's sort of a free and open source Twitter alternative, and it's definitely worth checking out. It's really great. I've got FitoTrack, which is a sort of fitness tracker. Now I'm a little bit sort of in between as to whether or not I want to use this because it does seem to be a little bit pointless, but you know I guess it's kind of cool to have. My current SMS client is QK SMS and the only reason I have that is it allows you to import and export your SMS sort of history, which is really nice when I like sort of reflash a new custom ROM or something like that. This is definitely the SMS app to get. I've got a notes program, Antenna Pod, which podcasts, um, and Element, which used to be called Riot, as you can see there. That also works really well too. And yeah, that's pretty much it. That's all the stuff that I've got on my de-googled Android phone. I definitely still recommend de-googling an Android device because the experience is just leaps and bounds better than an Android device with all the Google stuff clogging everything up and, you know, what is it selling your data onto marketing teams and whatnot. But yeah, so far, two months later, my experience is still every bit as good as it was when I made that first video. So with that said, that's it for today's video. Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next one.